Hello everyone. Welcome back to a new video on dentistry and more. So today's topic is functional matrix theory. So that is the fourth theory in theories of growth. We have covered genetic theory, sutural theory and cartilaginous theory. We have seen uh, what causes growth and development in each theory the genetical involvement, the sutural involvement and the cartilaginous involvement. Now let's move on to a different concept that is functional matrix theory. In functional matrix theory it is all about a functional cranial component. Now let's see what is functional matrix hypothesis or also known as Mohs functional matrix theory. It was given by Melvin Mohs. Functional matrix theory, it claims that the origin, growth, form, position and maintenance of all skeletal tissues and organs are always secondary compensatory and obligatory responses to temporarily and operationally prior events that occur in specifically related non-skeletal tissues, organs or functioning spaces or also known as functional matrices. So actually the main thing happens the structures which are related to these bonds the non-skeletal tissues, organs or functioning spaces are actually creating the growth. So that is the concept of functional matrix theory. The theory itself suggests that the organs, the skeletal tissues are always secondary and compensatory responses happening because of the events occur in the functional matrices which are non-skeletal tissues. It is a very different concept put forward by Melvin Moss. Actually it was a work of Van Der Klow and later Melvin Moss modified this. So this space or also known as functional matrices actually has two unit that is functional matrix and skeletal unit. So in functional matrix it is again we can divide this into capsular matrix and periosteal matrix. So functional matrix is about a one function then cranial component this matrix and skeletal unit so periosteal and capsular matrices the periosteal matrices actually it is influences bone directly it influences bone so this might be surrounding a bone and it directly influences that particular bone through periosteum and causing bone deposition and resorption. So actually it is known as microskeletal units. So bone growth is occurs by transformation that is deposition and resorption. So what are the periosteal matrices? We can say that it could be a temporalis muscle, it could be a blood vessel, it could be a gland which causing deposition and resorption of that particular bone and causing transformation growth changes. This is known as microskeletal units. So bone formation is by direct influences of this periosteal matrix. So it could be temporalis muscle, blood vessels or gland, anything which surrounds the particular bone and the next thing is capsular matrix capsular matrix is nothing but which is a capsule surrounding a ma mass or space so it is a uh, thing which is covering a mass just like the dura mater and scalp which covers the neural mass and orbit which covering the orbital tissues so these are known as capsular matrices so capsular matrix which is a covering unit which actually forms the epigenetic growth factors which has epigenetic growth factors which 
causes the growth and it creates a translational growth or it creates translational or volumetric changes and it is known as macroskeletal unit so macroskeletal unit the capsular matrices act upon the macroskeletal unit and causing translation the periosteal matrix which is acting upon the microskeletal unit which is causing transformation by bond deposition and resorption so transformation and translation which ultimately results in growth so this is the basic concept of functional matrix theory so basically the totality of soft tissues associated with a single function is termed as functional matrix so basically two distinct types types of functional matrices that is periosteal and capsular matrices periosteal matrices i already mentioned before that functional cranial component functional cranial component is uh, nothing but uh, the function we were talking about uh, it has two components that is functional matrix which is uh, actually perform the functional uh, functional duty of a uh, bone and the skeletal unit which provides a biomechanical role of protection and support to this functional matrix so the cranial component functional matrix is actually act as a matrix and the skeletal unit which provides support through a biomechanical role so functional matrix are basically two types uh, capsular matrix and periosteal matrices so periosteal matrices influence bone through periosteum uh, by direct deposition and resorption it can be temporalis muscle teeth blood vessels nerves and glands so periosteal matrices form the local environmental factors which affect the growth and the influence of periosteal matrices restricted to just a part of bone that is it affects the microskeletal units but whereas a capsular matrix which includes the capsule that surrounds the masses and spaces just like neural mass is uh, containing uh, the scalp and um, dura mater and also orbital mass which is Uh, supporting tissues of which are supporting tissues of eye or uh, oro nasal pharyngeal spaces are surrounded by various tissues uh, that form capsule uh, neuro cranial capsular matrices uh, many matrices are there so these matrices uh, cause growth of a whole bone not a just a part of bone the entire whole bone through a volumetric expansion of capsular matrix it is creating a spatial translation of whole bone or macroskeletal unit so whole bone formation or volumetric expansion occurs by the effect of capsular matrices now let's see what is a skeletal unit now let's see what is microskeletal and macroskeletal unit already we have seen what is microskeletal and macroskeletal just for a comparison microskeletal it's just a part of bone it is forming by the action of periosteal matrix okay so functional matrix the periosteal matrix is act upon the small part of bone by transformation that is by formation or uh, resorption and deposition the transformation is happening by microskeletal units and it affects the size and shape affects the size and shape okay that is microskeletal unit but the macroskeletal unit it is not just a part of bone it is a core of bone and by the action of capsular matrix okay this capsular matrix act upon macroskeletal unit it is by the process of trans translation that is volumetric expansion is happening and it is a not just size and shape it is a position so positional changes happening with the macroskeletal unit so these two combine to happen the growth of that particular bone so let's see some example and its corresponding microskeletal unit that is periosteal matrices if the temporalis it is associated with coronoid process tooth the alveolar bone the medial and lateral trigoid muscle associated with ankylosteomas which are the 
microskeletal unit which is a part of a bone and the capsular matrices such as nasal ma ma mass, eye mass and orofacial capsule nasal mass it the macroskeletal unit is cranium then eye mass its orbit and the orofacial uh, capsule the core of mandible and maxilla so that is the basic idea of periosteal matrix and microskeletal unit and also the capsular matrix and macroskeletal unit so according to this theory the growth potential actually lies outside the bone that is a functional space or a functional matrix where the things are happening rather than the bone itself so that is the most accepted theory that is functional matrix theory the functional cranial component its functional matrix and its skeletal units and the capsular matrices and periosteal matrices its microskeletal and macroskeletal units so what are the clinical implications of this functional matrix theory because orthodontic corrections of malocclusion is done either by intraoral or, or extraoral appliances so force application by these appliances tend to alter the functional matrix so we are applying this concept in orthodontic appliances so uh, alteration of periosteal functional matrices produces changes in microskeletal unit that is microskeletal unit and alteration in the capsular functional matrices produces macroskeletal uh, unit changes in the macroskeletal unit so what happens the periosteal matrix that is a tooth this is a periosteal matrix tooth the moment orthodontic after the orthodontic treatment there is change in alveolar bone and capsular matrix such as dentofacial uh, orthopedics like dentofacial complex there is macroskeletal unit that is jaws okay jaw movement or jaw changes will happen that is the capsular matrices So that's all about the theories, the major theories of uh, growth. We have covered the theories, genetic theory, sutural theory, cartilaginous theory and functional matrix theory. So these are the four important theories which commonly asked for the university exam. Uh, the functional matrix theory is little complicated but it is just the two parts and if you have this uh, flow chart in your mind it will be easy so I'll come up with a new session if you have any uh, particular chapter or particular subject you would like to have classes on do mention in the comment box so I'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more thank you